All right. What is up, everyone? Episode 72, Patio Slave Podcast. It is Anthony. I'm here with Tony and Nate and maybe a few others. But Tony, Nate, how are you guys doing? Good, man. I'm good. I'm ready to geek out on some uh, nostalgia tonight with you guys and uh, a few other people. We don't do that here, ever. <laughs> so who do we have? We have uh, we have the itch with us here tonight. We were uh, we had such a good time with them a few weeks ago talking about Jimmy Eat World and Bleed American that we decided to have them on with us to, as Nate said, go over a little nostalgia. Uh, hey guys, how you doing? Doing great. Very well, thank you. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Yeah, I'm actually really excited because when you guys came on to our show, we talked about a band that I really wasn't too keen on. Uh, so now we get to talk about something I might give a crap about. So thank you. Hell Appreciate yeah. It. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about you guys first before we get jumping into what we're going to talk about tonight. I think Aaron's got the summary down pat by now. Oh, I, <laughs> I got I got to do the summary. Okay. <laughs> well, like we should we should do our names first. So as you mentioned, I'm Aaron. And I'm Casey. And my name is Dan. Just in case. <laughs> yep. Do that Wait again. <laughs> we are the itch. We uh, were a longtime St. Louis radio show and during the pandemic we turned ourselves over into being a podcast because we could not do the radio show anymore and so we figured if we can't play music we'll just talk about it a lot and it's been a lot of fun we've done some you know guest appearances uh from some of our favorite musicians and we've got to do guest appearances on some of our uh our favorite podcasts so here we are doing one now <laughs> Hell yeah. And we appreciate you guys coming on with us tonight. We are doing The Wheel of New Metal Part 2, which, yes. if, again, if you clicked on the episode, you saw it. So you you, uh, you already know that's what we're doing. I appreciate you clicking on the episode. Nate loves The Wheel. Nate, want to explain what The Wheel is for him? Spin the wheel. You spin the wheel just like uh, I spin the wheel. What's that show? Um, wheel of Fortune? The Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, Wheel of Fortune. Je- 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 brain fart there for a second. Wheel of Fortune, yeah, but you get to choose your uh, well, kind of like a random new metal band and uh geek out a little bit so nostalgia combined with an old other nostalgia game show you know kind of the best of both worlds and this is a this is a plug to uh go check out our first uh wheel of new metal which is what episode 20 something yeah, 28 28 no thanks guys oh there we episode go 28. <laughs> episode 28 we'll tell you because beautiful we've been listening to it yeah so <laughs> We prepare. We try to research for our for our guest appearances. Much appreciated. Yeah, there you go. That makes, that makes three of yeah. you. <laughs> so I, I do want to um, call back to that episode a little bit. We, we did do – I'll read you down the names of the bands that we hit last time. The band Spineshank, we hit Deftones, we hit Linkin Park, Limp Bizkit, Mudvayne, Drowning Pool, Saliva, Orgy, Power Man 5000, Fear Factory, and Ra. Now, before we get on tonight, Dan said that he had a he had an axe to grind with us about a couple of our uh, comments from episode twenty eight. So, Dan, the floor is yours, man. What did we get wrong? Well, it, start off the bat, you guys, I think started with Fear Factory and called it a Hall of Fame band. And I mean, while your logic was that you were well aware of the band, that you didn't know of any of their songs, though. Um, Nate. So with that, that kind of bothered me that if me you didn't too. know any of their songs. Like, yeah, you can know the band. Like, I know who Taylor Swift is, but I don't know any of her songs. Doesn't mean I consider her a Hall of Famer. <laughs> but uh, no, I was just, I, you know, I, I will say that Fear Factory has had staying power over the year. I just wouldn't have, I would have classified them more as an all star. I've seen them live. They're actually really good live. And I just didn't think that they were Hall of Fame ranking. And you did that to Drowning Pool. I don't know, actually, I think Drowning Pool, you went the opposite way. You went like way low. And like said, they were bench warmers. But I will say that you guys dissed on one of my favorite albums of all time, which is Sinner. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, I'm one of these people that believe that that band would be right up there with Disturbed and, and popularity if Dave Williams had not passed away. Uh, they, he was really good at writing really catchy tunes. Because um, the other song you guys couldn't quite place was Tear Away, because you kept mentioning Bodies, but Tear Away was also a really popular song in its own right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, they had a whole bunch of other singles. And then when Dave Williams did pass away, they actually got another singer, Jason the Gong Jones, <laughs> uh, and had another huge single called Step Up that was on the Punisher soundtrack that actually was very, very well. I remember that song, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I don't think that they were Hall of Famers. I would not say uh, Drying Pool's a Hall of Famer, but I would say that they're all-stars in the sense that they're now on their fourth singer. That's true. <laughs> and they wow. still keep putting out albums that people <laughs> listen to. So kudos to them on that. Like, how many bands can recover from 
getting over the passing of a singer, much less while well, you continue to lose singers and singers. Like my favorite rendition of Drowning Pool was with Ryan McAdams, the former singer of Soil. Uh, I, I absolutely love him. I think that he was a really good fit for that band since Dave Williams. But yeah, I, that was really the only two that I kind of had gripes on. But other than that, I thought you guys were fairly accurate with, the, with everything else. Oh, thanks. Thanks, man. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to plug uh, the Jimmy World episode. I'm pretty sure Drowning Pool came up in that episode. Yes. Because bodies got kind of banished from the world at that point in time. We did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Bodies. And you guys kind of mentioned on your show, and I, I, I didn't think of it, and I don't think we mentioned it on our show, but you guys mentioned that that kind of pro- that might have led to the success of that song because of, you know, that, that uh, taboo sort of thing. Like, oh, this is a, a, a not a good song to listen to. I want to listen to it. You know, one of those kind of things. Good for you. Definitely. So we we had some tiers, which we did back then, and that's that's kind of what uh, Dan was referencing. So we had Goat Status, Mount Rushmore. Those are the top four. Uh, I can't remember who we even had, but we had... We, we had, had differing f- opinions. We had differing but... opinions on that, and I'm sure with yeah. six people, yeah. we'll have differing opinions again tonight. <laughs> I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure it was... Uh, some of them were... Deftones, right? Yeah, it was oh, yeah. yeah. Deftones, Linkin Park. Yep. Um, One of you said Limp Biscuit. One of you said Limp Biscuit. Might have been me. Slipknot. <laughs> And corn. Slipknot corn. and corn. Yeah. 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 yeah and I oh, mean, yeah. I stand by that still today. I know we're, we're ways out now. We're probably what, 40 episodes later, but I, I think I stand by it by that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and even, even not to um, spoil too much ahead of what we're about to do, since we don't know what bands are going to come up here. I think that largely those ones you just mentioned are going to be the pool for, for most, if not all of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and no matter what, like, you know, enough time has passed now that we know who kind of more or less falls in this category and where they've landed over the years and their influence and staying power and whatnot. Totally. Yep. So we get that we get that tier, we've got the Hall of Famers, we've got All Stars, Sixth Man, Bench Warmer, and then Casey gave us one tonight. Waiver wire <laughs> or designated for assignment. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the <laughs> These are the these tiers, baby. Banished. Yeah, these are the triple banished A from New Metal. Double A. You know, maybe they Yeah. Got a first start when they were like thirty. You know, it's flash, like the random flash journey. The yeah. <laughs> Did a particular band come to mind when you thought of that status, Casey? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan knows exactly who it is. I hope they come up. I really hope they come up. <laughs> I'm curious, yeah. <laughs> yep. And so I don't know if we mentioned it. Th- those names that you just mentioned, we removed from this round. Yep. Those are so, yeah. Yeah. okay. Cool. Yeah. One might have made it. One might have made its way in there, but who knows? <laughs> I got fifty-one of them here, I think. So, oh man, there's going to be like four or five new metal episodes throughout oh, the course of your history yeah. before this is all done. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think without further ado, we ready to spin the wheel, guys? Yeah. Do it. All right, I'm doing it. Let's spin on the wheel. Now, we need somebody to make noises because last time we spun the wheel, Greg did for us, but <laughs> oh, Greg did such a good job. Hey! Oh, nice. hey! Uh, goat, oh, just yeah. just a goat right there. <laughs> so we, the band Nonpoint, which I mean, I, we have to cede the floor to our friends at the Itch because they interviewed a couple of them. So, guys, yes. whoever wants to lead off, let's let's hear it. Nonpoint. Man, I, let me let me sell it first. <laughs> we had the pleasure of interviewing Rob and Jason of Nonpoint. Uh, what couple months back, uh, mm-hmm. episodes fifty four and fifty five at itchrocks.com. And those were great. And now I'll let you guys take over the rest. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, that's tough because, like, you said there's, like, you know, if you're if you're considering greatest of all time, like Mount Rushmore, there's only four bands. I don't know if I could put Nonpoint up there. I think that they're, they, you know, they've got staying power. They've put out 10 phenomenal albums. They're about to be 11. I, man, I, I, I would say Hall of Fame, but they're damn near the GOAT for me. There's no doubt. Yeah, I would I would – tend to put them up in in hall of fame status just by staying power alone um and they put put out phenomenal albums every time so i haven't heard as many of their albums as you guys have so for me they're more all-star again on that staying power um and on the fact that they are just grinders like these are guys who are out there we've talked in our show a lot about workhorse bands that are consistent with releases and they're always touring and they just work really hard and Nonpoint is really good at that, especially right now. If you go listen to those episodes, you'll learn more about how they just uh, went fully independent, started their own label. They are a small team of maybe 10 or so people, including the band, that are 
responsible for the entirety of their own future going forward and hopefully developing some new artists as well. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and agree. I think they're, they're either all-star or borderline hall of famer. And I think for me, they're probably an all-star, but like maybe not first ballot hall of famer type. Like I could see him getting right. in on longevity down the road. Uh, they phenomenal live show. It's been, it's been years since I've seen them, but they opened for, Papa Roach, I think, in Portland, Maine, yeah. probably 2006 ish, 2005, 2006. And that was an odd, they were awesome. They like blew the doors off the State Theater, and we were all like, whoa. They're, I mean, we knew they were good to begin with, but uh, to, to see them do that, we we're like, all right, cool. These guys, they just go up a notch when you get to see the live show, and the live show kicks ass. So I do want to throw it to Nate, and I need to throw it to Nate just because he needs to talk about the our album. Uh, art. Uh, I was gonna bring it up. <laughs> Nate, you got it. Oh, he's oh. he's got to give us that too. But I mean, because uh, what was it? Was it Renegades? Vengeance. Vengeance. Sorry, Vengeance. Vengeance. That, the album art was just not <laughs> just not great, guys. <laughs> That's the one with the them all cartoon figures, right? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. I think I'm gonna kind of probably fall around the same categories. Kind of a hybrid between All Star and hall of famers right in the in the middle there but for good reason you guys been you know made some good points that their staying power their live show is amazing they're super nice guys met them a few times they've opened for like every band i've ever seen in the new metal scene i feel like they i mean they toured like yep. crazy and they still do and i was obsessed those first two albums i like l love those albums to death you know front to back albums and just full-on bangers um so i'd have to say they're right in between those two categories and uh you know, the album artwork thing, whatever. You know, that was the whole segment, right? We, we did a, a segment <laughs> it's on. It's funny, though. I had to bring it up. <laughs> yeah, album artwork that didn't kind of, I don't know, meet didn't you know, click. meet the grade. But at the same time, the first two uh, albums is just like their non-point spider logo. Or it's not a spider, is it? I guess it is. Yeah, yeah kind of, yeah. Yeah, kind of like the cold logo. So, <laughs> right? Yeah, similar. Actually, <laughs> pretty similar, yeah. Yeah, so, and but those guys are great, man. Every time they roll through, like, I'll definitely see them. It's one of those bands that, like, the fact they're still going and, you know, you know you're going to hear the old stuff, but even the new stuff is solid. Like, they haven't lost. They're kind of like Seven Dust. They just keep going, but they exactly. keep making strong music. And uh, Elias is just such a great vocalist and such a showman, too. So, um, one of the concerts that changed my life was Seven Dust, Nonpoint, and Skinned Red back in 2004. Oh, nice. That's a good bill. All right, so I'm up here. So uh, Hall of Famers, I, I think they're Hall of Famers. I think by definition we say Hall of Famer, remembered in 20 years. They're definitely remembered. In fact, I think they're more hype on them in their career now than they were back then. Statement Agreed. development, untouchable for the genre. Actually, those albums, I'm not saying they're GOAT status albums, but they're those alone get them there. You know, I haven't listened as much lately in the last maybe decade, but those first two albums are great. And I actually saw them two years ago open for P.O.D. And that band hasn't aged. I remember seeing them back in like 2001 in Portland and uh, they crushed it. So for me, Hall of Famers, H.O.F.s. I think that's pretty much a consensus then, right? Yeah, I think we're putting them into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Potty sleep certified. <laughs> <laughs> I got to give us credit here. Six of us just agreed on something. I mean, I didn't think that was going to happen once tonight, and here we are. Yeah, right, so. off the bat. <laughs> right off the bat. All right, we ready? I'll spin it again. All right. Do, 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 do. Oh, nice. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I literally only have one thought about this band. I guess I say who they are first. <laughs> so the band is 36 Crazy Fists. Why don't I start? Yeah, why don't I'll, you start? I'll start. So it's actually, in hindsight, it's kind of interesting we put them in this category because I think they, they kind of straddled that uh, metalcore, new metal line. Like I've seen them not with new metal bands. They were kind of the, um, it'll come to me, but they used to tour with a... Uh, was it Nullset? No, not Nullset. I would say... <laughs> Kill Switch? <laughs> no, not Kill Switch. I would say for these guys, probably six man. They're not an all-star. They found their way onto tours, but I'm actually surprised we put them in here. <laughs> and actually, wasn't there a big like accident they were in? Weren't they in a big car accident? I am not sure. 
Everyone's like, I don't know this, man. What do we do? Re- real time, I'm checking it out. Skimming Wikipedia real fast. Yeah. <laughs> You know, this is a classic Dan move on, our, on the edge. <laughs> yeah. Research yes, as, as we go. Except I'm not actually doing it this time. They were on Road Runner, huh? I mean, that fits. Yeah, for me, six man. I mean, they're not all-stars. They're not scrubs because they did have staying power, but I couldn't I couldn't name a song. <laughs> I feel you on that one. <laughs> I'm thinking of Candiria. I don't know how the fuck I couldn't think of that. They, they, they oh, were wow. like Candiria, who, where depending on the time of their career, they straddled that metal core slash new metal line i think they're a bench warmer for me i i don't know nothing i know nothing about them i i they're a band that i remember seeing on bills forever i remember stickers showing up at a record store <laughs> i remember being like why why does this name keep coming up and it was if they were like metal core adjacent at that time i wasn't i wasn't listening to that i i probably would have found that more in the mid 2000s as opposed to 99 2000 2001 so I, it was I had kind of moved on to that scene, and maybe if they had come around for me then, I might have paid more attention. But yeah, because of that, they're they're a bench warmer. I don't I just don't know. I never saw them. They never opened for anybody that I saw over the course of seeing numerous new metal bands around then. You know, Head PE, Seven Dust, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, no, I think they're for me. They're probably a bench warmer. Yeah, I'm gonna have to probably agree with you there. I don't know a whole lot of their music. I knew a single that I had. You know, I think remember those CDs they'd give you when you buy a CD, you get like a two song sampler. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I had that, but uh, like Tone said, they didn't come through on any tours. That's really when I go all in, you know, like, okay, I saw them, I'm going to go buy the album. It's almost like a reverse. You buy the album, then you see the show. For me, it was like, see the show, like, oh shit, I'm into them now. So because <laughs> of that, I didn't get a chance to really dig deep and I didn't go down the nerd rabbit hole to really fully give them the time of day, which is kind of too bad. Like now that we're kind of talking about it, Tone and, and I like, you know, they were like plastered. There were CDs, there was promotion, and like we just didn't give it the time of day. But it just shows how like saturated the new metal scene was at the time. There was just mm. so much coming at you. It's like you only have so much time. But in retrospect, also, we had all, all the time in the world. We were all kids, right? Teenagers. So. Yeah, true. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I'll go. Um, I'll be quite honest. Like, I remember the name. Uh, so I'd consider them a bench warmer because I, I don't know any of their songs. I'm almost positive I saw them either, either on Warp Tour or some kind of a, a metal concert like a big metal concert and i i don't remember like them making an impression so yeah they're bench warmers for me and if a band doesn't make a live impression especially on dan then that's (laughs) that's that's the end of them Mm -hmm. and so yeah i don't remember anything about these guys other than i know i do know that the itch used to play them at least a tiny bit here and there because that's the only place i ever remember hearing this band's name and (laughs) <laughs> so it had to be you guys. Maybe it was just for a, a, a brief season of time or like one track. I don't know. But uh, mm-hmm. that they, they existed, and um, and they used to have a bass player named Buzzard, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, so I'm going to give them a little bit for that, but they're definitely bench warmers. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, bench warmer for me as well. And if you look at their Spotify streams, that uh, also backs up that fact. Oh, oh. nice. How many? <laughs> What's their monthly <laughs> listenership? I, I don't know their monthly listenership, but uh, like their main track is 14 million, and then it, it drastically drops after that. Wow. <laughs> so that's probably the single you got, Nate, back in the day. Yeah. Blood, blood work. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. You know what's interesting, too, is they're from Anchorage, Alaska. So for them to even come out and have any success at all is a huge statement for coming all the way from Alaska. So good on them to even get anywhere, get signed, you know? Yeah. That's pretty cool. They're still getting 224,000 uh, monthly listens on Spotify. 224. Yeah. Yeah. 224,465. So they're still making a decent decent bank from that. About yeah. 224,000 more than we're getting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So is that two in a row of full consensus? I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Man. This We're is, too much uh, alike. I'm telling you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did love the gift that you or the uh, the the clip from Shaun of the Dead that you put up. I thought that was great. <laughs> it was yes, awesome. it, it's it's so perfect. <laughs> Spinning the wheel, Spin round it. three. Tick 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 is it? Yay! No. <laughs> 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 
the joy in the six of us' face when the when a name pops up on the screen. <laughs> you guys can feel it, I hope, through your phones. I'm just glad it went to the one like right above it because I didn't know the other band. I was like, I, I yeah, we might have just <laughs> we might have just had to skip if it was the other one because we'd be like, here's two bands in a row that nobody really remembers much yeah. about. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the band that we're talking about right now is Dope. Dope has come up on the wheel. Who wants to lead us off? Uh, you know, I will. Uh, it, the funny thing is, is that I think it's hilarious that Dope is more remembered for their cover songs than uh than their actual songs they had a couple of songs that were okay here like kimberly's ghost uh basically the album uh called revolutionaries um but the cover song of you spin me right round was really good and they also did a cover song of fuck the police that was actually really good too and uh, rebel would, yell yeah apparently they did rebel yell as well I i'd probably put them as sixth man like I, they're not bench warmers because they're not forgettable like like i said i think that they were actually really good at covering and obviously he's really good at singing wing static uh, <laughs> so that's just that's just my yeah so I, i'd say sixth man they're totally uh, i'm gonna give him sixth man on account of how good he is at doing wayne static <laughs> um more so than ever liking anything that dope did and so because i'm i'm a static x fan even now after the passing of wayne and they're Dope has long been associated with that band. Yeah. And at now, you know, current day, the rumor is that they're very associated with that band. <laughs> and so um, for that reason alone, they get six man over being bench warmers. Yeah, I would agree with that just by being uh, a part of the tours with them back in the day and and keeping themselves out there. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll start us off. So Dope was the band that, I've I've seen like four times, but never went to go see Dope. It was like they, <laughs> right. they, they were the band that I don't know. I just I, I I I never got it. I still don't get it. I can see the Static X parallel, and I didn't like them either. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they they're still active. They're on tours now that I've seen come up. So it's not DFA. For me, bench warmer, but I could definitely understand if someone, if someone's into them, yeah, they're six man all star. For me, though, bench warmer. I think I'm kind of in the same boat as Tuan. Uh, I, I'm sure they opened for a band or two that I Cold. saw, but yeah, but yeah. I just didn't. Cold. <laughs> yeah, and I like I would go see Cold again, but at the same time, like probably got there late, didn't even check them out. Which you know, seventeen year old me was sometimes an idiot, like. I would definitely go see everything now. I mean, we went the other night to a, a show and watched the openers because <laughs> it was the, that's what we wanted to see. So, uh, it's the logo, the the writing of the band name is iconic. I knew that. I saw. I looked it up again just now, and I was like, "Yep, I've seen that a million times." So I got to give them credit there, and that probably moves them into the sixth man versus bench warmer, just because that type of thing is. If you can pull that off for if somebody's not even a fan, like good on you. Nice. Um, I'm trying to think here. I've seen them a few times similar. They've op opened for a ton of shows that I've seen and I'm going to go bench warmer because of those live shows. Like they were good, but it was the same show like clockwork every <laughs> single time with like the police lights and all that stuff. But the, the cover of fuck the police really is solid. One of the shows that I saw with them is when I set up as like a stage hand. And I think maybe that's why it's going to bench warmer over six man. As I remember they were kind of, or what's the guy's name? The singer's name. That's kind of a, so, yeah, he's kind of a dick. Oh, okay, <laughs> so okay. it kind of it kind of knocks him down a little bit because of that. Unfortunately, I mean, you get what you pay for. Uh, if you're gonna be a dick, then I'm gonna remember it. You know. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> you're not a big fan of "Die Motherfucker Die." Come on, man. I actually yeah. like that song, uh, but I've seen that song every time they've played, and it's just like the same <laughs> antics, the same stage presence, same show. You know, it's almost like a choreographed kind of thing for like a rock show. It's like kind of like unnecessary, but um, but that song, I remember that song so like. Like it's night and day. Like I remember seeing that with the Static X tour and just like hearing that song, just like repeating in my head because it was so like uh, it was on a loop. <laughs> Felons and revolutionaries. That's the album. Yeah, I was gonna point out how um, I think there's something to be said for like consistency, and what I was gonna be referring to that uh, you kind of touched on, like their their logo, their album covers, like it's the same font, same thing, almost always in the same spot on an album. And I'm kind of a sucker for that kind of thing. Like Cake was a band that always did that. And I appreciated yep. that they had this this uh, aesthetic similarity. 
but that doesn't go for your live show. Your live performance needs to be, you know, forever improving and evolving. And so that totally makes sense. Although you, I mean, you could say the same about White Castle. You know, it's consistent. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. Am I going to go? Ba- am I going to go back there? <laughs> We don't have a White Castle, so yes, I would go back. <laughs> I'll, I'll, it's one of the White Castle is one of the things where I'll go back every once in a while, just after the time period just passes, to, where I forget the last experience, just to clear your system out. That's right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or that. You know. <laughs> White Castle will like not it, be sponsoring the Patio Slate podcast anytime <laughs> soon. Or the itch. Blame it on the itch. That's all right. So what you're trying to say is, if White Castle is opening for Five Guys, you'd, you'd eat that too. Like <laughs> <laughs> Good comparison, Aaron, yeah. from the itch. No. <laughs> uh, all right, we ready for another Shit, spin? I'm hungry. Yes. <laughs> Moving along, Dan's so my Dan gets hungry. <laughs> spin of the wheel. There you go. Yeah. You hung- hungry for some corn or limp biscuit? Either one of these we is going to be We got to get a big one here. Yes, we did. Oh. Yep, we got oh. a big one. Oh. Fun. Oh. All right. Alien oh. ant farm. Oh boy. Hey, hey, yeah. right. So I'm going to lead off because I actually, they came up on, uh, whatever happened to those guys. Our episode, we did whatever, whatever happened to those guys. <laughs> oh wait, why wasn't the band bigger? What's that? Oh yes. What was it? Why wasn't the band bigger? I yeah. So. One or the other. Well, they, whatever happened to those guys. <laughs> <little bump. laughs> so they, they're a band that obviously, uh, everybody knows smooth criminal, the, the Michael Jackson cover. That was what jumped them off, but they had other good songs. I thought Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Anthology is is a good record and I think the one after it Truant is really good and I think the one after that uh Up in the Attic I think is also yep. underrated for for uh what they are. After that I don't know if they've done a whole heck of a lot but yeah those I spent a decent amount of time with this band f- from really Anthology through Up in the Attic and uh, they're probably an all-star for me. Not a Hall of Famer. Uh, they didn't have the longevity. They're not still kicking around, putting out good records. We all know them today. I mean, you could, you could almost put them in the Hall of Fame just because of how, uh, you know, big that cover of Smooth Criminal was. But I'm not going to do that. You got to do something on your own for to get into my Hall of Fame. So they're a Hall of Fame or they're a, an All Star for me. I have mixed feelings on Alien Ant Farm. Like uh, <laughs> I really do. I would say, like, I I would call them a sixth man. Like, yeah, I agree that Anthology was a fantastic album, but I saw them live right after they put out that album, and the dude was a douche. Uh, <laughs> he, he basically spent the entire concert bitching about how they were on the small stage and that they should be on the large stage, even though they had one fucking album out. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, it just it just really put me off of that band because he was just was a very pompous asshole when I first like the first time I ever saw them, and then you know, fast forward 15 years later. Uh, we got to see them at a small little venue with Head PE, and he was one of the coolest fucking guys I've met in a long time. He was very down to earth. He actually made a rhyme with his name and, and doing a liner for our show. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a lot of cool. It was it was really cool. So I, I'd say six man. Like I don't think that they're forgettable, but uh, you know I don't know if I'd say that they're all stars because I really only think that the one album is is worth anything. I mean they're, yeah, the other couple albums were okay, but beyond that one, like I don't know, it just wasn't. I wasn't a fan beyond that one album. <laughs> oh, that's a compelling argument. I do love a good redemption story that you just gave us, though. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you know, it's funny. It's like that 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 tour should have been called the "I Grew the Fuck Up" tour. Yeah, uh, because <laughs> both <laughs> Jared from Head PE and Mitch from uh, Alien Ant Farm were were very mature, and like those both those guys were, you know, known for their antics throughout the early two thousands and and late nineties. So, uh, yeah, I, it was it was really interesting to get to see both of them and and uh, and talk and meet with them at the time. That was back in like 2014, 15 or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. And I remember, I remember watching that show and the the one fan just yelling, "A A F A A F!" Like the entire set, and we're like, "Man, shut up, man!" Like, Where's that one guy? Who is and if you're listening, fan. thank you. And yeah. yes, they are goat status. Keep doing your thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To that guy, they were goat status. But yeah, no, I, I think they're they're six man, maybe borderline all star. But they got some they got some good tracks that I would uh, like to listen to. But uh. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna go all star. You guys have made some pretty compelling arguments. I was gonna go all star on on the strength of anthology, because as you mentioned, like that album had some good stuff. It had movies, uh, attitude, 
Flesh and Bones, some very good songs. And I feel like Dryden had potential to be, he was a weird dude. And I think that weird people can go a long way in rock. Think of like a Perry Farrell kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And and it and even today, like, and it's probably on the strength of Smooth Criminal. This is a band that has three million monthly listeners. That is a lot of listeners. Yeah. And yeah, so that's Smooth Criminal. It's Smooth yeah. Criminal. Yeah. Milk Multiple that, versions uh, twice, on Spotify. Twice. Yeah, twice. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so the numbers are inflated a little bit, but um, I don't know. I think that I think you mentioned like why is this band bigger? I think that they're definitely in one of those of the bands in this genre. I think they're one of the ones that they're they somehow could have done more than they really ended up doing yeah so if I'm, mitch wasn't I'm, such a tool when he was younger he probably would have been bigger <laughs> maybe i don't know there's a lot of rock stars that are tools even when they're young and they still get True. famous so i don't know i'll give you a sixth man though but i'm gonna put him borderline on all-star yeah yeah these are all solid assessments um i have a kind of a interesting story with alien ant farm too that a a a f thing i saw them open for papa roach it was you thousand in the crowd (laughs) 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 but the infestor they kept like repping their name big because it was in boston for uh w a a f and it was a big like cross promotion going on with that (laughs) the whole time it was like in your face it's like i get it i get it um but um, oh that's good i like that yeah and i liked the album you know and i I liked their they were good they were solid uh not as good as p roach for that that in particular tour, but, uh, <laughs> and their other albums are, are pretty good. You know, I feel like their name really hinders their success to be honest. Cause they, yeah. if you kind of, is it a bandy cap, Nate? It's a bandy cap big time. Is it? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, depending on who you talk to it's very subjective, obviously, but, uh, the, all three albums, at least those first three, like there's solid, there's solid numbers on, on, on all those albums. That's just not consistent. And that first one is pretty consistent. Attitude's one of my favorite songs on there. Mm. Um, the slower ballad type stuff. But I would have to probably go bench warmer, wow. forgettable. Uh, I could go six Ooh. man, six man, I guess. But bench warmer, just because. I mean, I never listen to them. They probably come through once in a while, and I I don't go, you know. But they were kind of they fit the time and maybe longevity wise. If they really kind of narrowed it down to a good collection of songs, you know, cohesively, they could probably make a good comeback. But it's just too spread out. But yeah, like you said earlier. Uh, Aaron with the the front man, he is a, definitely a weird dude. <laughs> I mean, he had that reverse mohawk kind of thing, that inverted yeah. deal, and and I thought that was a cool look at the time. Like at least it made him stand out, and you needed something that made you stand out. I think the better question is, is would you really consider Alien Ant for new metal? Like I, yeah, I don't that's know, that's kind of more fair. Of alternative. Like you know, I, I guess the alternative is what I would really consider that. But yeah, it's I, I don't know. New metal was very broad at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. kind of meant any band that was like in the two, two or early 2000s really yeah i think that they're there in the in the same fringe that like incubus is on mm-hmm. yeah. it's like their their early sound was very similar to like the incubus like make yourself sound yeah, yeah um, that's true okay. so I, I put them so they have fringe yeah yeah i think by by default it's their six man i mean they didn't carve their own niche they were actually the opposite of that so they're not all stars they're not bench warmers because we're we're still talking about them although that's kind of we a were, low bar. We were forced to. We were forced to. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, wheel, the wheel spoke. The wheel. <laughs> we didn't speak to the wheel. The wheel spoke to us. But they're not forgettable. It's six, man. I maybe liked it in the time. The name sucks. The name blows. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how did DreamWorks sign them? Well, I know they're the <laughs> Ask, like, we, like we said, they're the Ask Jeeves of... Uh, Labels. That's how they signed them. They're gone. (laughs) You just quoted our episode. Good job. Like just like that's some consistency right there. Yeah, check that Jimmy World episode. We'll hear more about Ask Jeeves. And maybe I can't get over that. You know, there have been some some successful bands with insects like the Beatles. Alien and Farm Roach. Ain't one of them. And Pop Roach. Yeah, that was a geez, maybe that's like the hidden new metal cheat code. Throw a bug in there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, got them the Pop Roach tour. I mean Pop Roach is really like their this band was associated closely with that band, yeah. not just for the name, but they kind of, I don't want to say rode their coattails per se, but like um, <laughs> there was, a, there was a lot of association Yeah, and it fit. I mean, uh, that's genius. I mean, the infest tour, come on. Yeah. 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 Alien ant farm. It, it, I mean, it could be the worst of all time. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> wow. Woo. All wow. right. If, so if, they're, they're goat if status that AAF, for terrible uh, fan, name. Then, um, yeah. then please still listen to us. Yeah. So they got ghost status with Spine Shank and yeah. <laughs> among the new metal 
Mount Rushmore of, of bandy caps. Is that what you're saying? An orgy. There, an orgy. There are a lot of bandy caps in the new metal genre. Let's be <laughs> That's honest. That's a fair assessment right there. <laughs> yes, I'll agree with that. <laughs> and there's some great names too, but there are a lot of bandy caps. See if we can get a great one on the next spin here. We'll spin it right now. How about that? Here we go. Yeah, I want to haul or like a, go go a goat. We need a goat. I know we haven't had a goat. We need a goat. Uh -oh. What the hell is that? <laughs> I don't oh, we even don't... know what the fuck that I is. I genuinely don't know that band. Neither do I. <laughs> All right, so I'll I'll chime in. The band's Relative Ash. Go listen to their their major label debut, and it's basically Deftones Adrenaline. So if you, if you like. Deftones, uh, Adrenaline era Deftones. This was a label play that their album, Relative Ash, uh, their album came out in 2000. I mean, it's so blatant. It, it could be the biggest ripoff of all time. Oh, easily. I agree full, wholeheartedly because I listened a little bit today for the first time in 20 years. I'm like, man, like, is this, I thought they were like, it seems like they're B-sides of Adrenaline, like literally. Like and, and they everything got down to like, yeah. yeah. Industry plant, as you say. It could have been an industry plant. Yeah. They were late though, though. They came out in 2000. Like, if you're yeah. going to do that era Deftones, you could have come on the heels of Adrenaline yeah. in like 97, 98. But anyway, we'll skip them. I'm just going to put them on the waiver wire and designate for them for assignment right now. How about that? Designated for assignment. <laughs> I'll scoop them up. It was good. You can scoop them up. I haven't listened to it, so I can't, I can't properly rate that. Spin of the wheel again. After Sorry Relative Ash, you were DFA'd for being a knockoff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, I have nothing to say about this band either. I have yeah, something I to say about this band, this and I, and it's just because I have Nate's box of shit in my house. There are probably <laughs> four hundred Drakeologic matchbooks in my uh, guest room right now that are Nate's from matchbooks. from twenty years ago. And uh, yeah, Dracologic is the band, and they had that marketing. I'd mail them to Nate, but they're matches. I don't think I can, first of all. <laughs> I use yeah. them, but they're 20 years old. They probably don't work. And, or they just go up in flames. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I tweeted something about this not that long ago, and the band liked it. So they are still active. <laughs> and they were in, like, the 36 Crazy Fists. Like, they, they got tours outside of new Metal. But they're a new Metal band. They're, like, American Head Charge, like... In that realm, I'm giving them yep. bench warmer status for myself, just yep. just cause, <laughs> cause they cause they have matches, they can keep you warm. They have matches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna get a big one here. I can feel it. The wheel is spinning again. There's just too many new metal bands. That's a problem. <laughs> of course not. Uh oh, <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> of course not. <laughs> oh man. Do we hey, have? We were much just talking about a band that sounded like and looked well. I guess look too like another band. Yep. This is one of them. Do we want to do it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Mush Mushroom Head. Is this one's worth it. Go ahead, Twan. So Slipknot Jr., right? Yeah, Slipknot Jr., yes. Yeah, so that, that was the big thing with them, is they were Slipknot Jr., but the irony is they, they formed before Slipknot. Right. Uh, they got their shine after Slipknot. They had a song, what was it, something Unravels or something? Yeah. I can't remember. I saw them in Portland twice. Well, they they came to Day Off Fest, didn't they? Well, then three times then. <laughs> uh, I saw them at a, a, a small club in Portland, and, you know, for the era, good show. Could I put this band on in 2021 and enjoy it? I don't, probably not. Man, I would say, I don't have the tears pulled up here, but I would say uh, Bench Warmer for me. I think they're a big name, but if you take away the, the, the whole dressing up shtick, I think they're a local band that doesn't get out of the, out of the VFW. Yeah, they got like 10 members or something like that too don't they just like slip not like there's a big band yeah yeah huge band a big uh rhythm section <laughs> which kind of it's got to kind of suck to be them to like have done this thing first and then this band comes and just shoots right past you using the <laughs> same yep. the same stick <laughs> yeah. um I, I, they're gonna be a. Uh, they're going to be bench warmers for me personally i think that they're one of those bands like fear factory from their previous episode that today has a bigger following than you might think. Like yeah. I've, I've, I've heard like an interview with the guy from that band not long ago. And the guy who was interviewing him wasn't just like, he was a very knowledgeable dude. And he, he, he spoke with a degree of reverence that I didn't know people had for mushroom head. <laughs> and so I think that this band has still has their following. Uh, and it's just, I'm not part of it. And so kudos to them for that, for that longevity, even if, you know, I'm not personally listening. Yeah, they do. It's like 
500,000 monthly Spotify listeners. And the song I was thinking of was Solitaire Unraveling. That oh, that yes. made a splash in like 2000, 2001. And I bought the CD. I still have it. I think I bought the CD too. Yep. It was a six ninety seven <laughs> Bull Moose yep, special. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> and that was why. And, and yeah. you got a poster, which is still yep. back here. So we'll um, use that to promote it. Sure, I have that as well. And we'll, <laughs> nice. and we'll cut when I just it. <laughs> the mushroom. Yeah. Right, there you go. Yeah, I think I'd have to put them as a bench warmer just because they're another one of those bands that did get a lot of tours and somehow was on a lot of shows, but didn't make a huge impact. Yeah, I would, I'd be right there with KC that uh, it's a their bench warmer for me. I'm pretty sure I saw them live once or twice, but they never really were that great that I remembered it. Yeah. I think we're all in consensus here with all that nice. band. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. I'm going to go bench warmer too. Like that show I was talking about with Dope, uh, as a stagehand was actually with uh, Mushroom Head too. So <laughs> it was one of those like weird situations where I wasn't like a big fan of the band. So it was actually like work rather than, ah, oh, nice, I'm in the show and I'm working on the side, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go bench warmer just because I didn't really know them then. I checked them out a little bit during their show and, you know, wasn't really floored by anything. So it was kind of like, ah, cool, happy to be here. But, you know, move on basically. It goes back to like that over- oversaturation you metal. There was just too much going on that it's like, you know, that was like more of a, okay, this is a work night, not a nerd out night. You know? mm-hmm. So, yep, bench warmer, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. If if you're scoring at home, Nate has met non-point and been a stagehand for what? Dope, <laughs> mushroom head. <laughs> Drink. And, and, Drink. Yeah, there's a few, Drink. There's a few others. Uh, <laughs> just if you're scoring at home. All right, we're spinning the wheel. It's a lot faster on my computer, sorry. Yeah, it's going quick. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's almost like the wheel knows the itch is on our podcast tonight. <laughs> it does. <laughs> the band skid red. red. All right, I'm gonna I'm turning it over to you guys again. Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the greatest concert that I ever went to, Skin Red, opened for Nine Point Seven Dust, and I had no idea who the band was. It was 2004. They had just come out with their single Nobody, and I remember standing at the back of the stage when they started, and by the into their set i was up against the front of the stage like i was into the show like benji just has this way of pulling people in he's one of the best frontmen of all time and and for me there's no doubt like this is a, a goat this is one of the greatest bands of all time like nice. i absolutely love this band they they would be on my mount rushmore i think you know, they're usually like around me somewhere in some poster or shirt you know <laughs> like <laughs> i thought you meant i thought you were gonna say literally yeah like, they're just hanging out in there with you <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. If, he, if he could get that then yeah yeah, absolutely. Skin Dread's always there cheering him on while he does his podcast recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, for the sake of, of this episode, I, I'll have to give them uh, goat status just uh, just on, on this episode since we haven't had too many of those <laughs> come across just yet. But uh, they're phenomenal and uh, had a chance to see them two or three times. I like all their albums. And we had the pleasure of uh, interviewing Aria, the drummer. That was... Uh, a great highlight of the podcast <laughs> in my <Sorry>. life <laughs> <laughs> nice. right below getting married and having children <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> if you go to to our to itchrocks.com that's episodes 29 and 30 this no. our interview with aria <laughs> of skin dread no, they are. We've said for years that Skin Dread is the Itch's official favorite band, and part of that comes from our backstory of them being like the first, like a uh, record label like single that we got when we started the show. And so we felt like we had like discovered this new thing and this great sounding thing when we were playing Nobody. I, nobody else. I, nobody else was playing them. Nobody was <laughs> yeah. playing Nobody. It's, yeah, at least that we knew of. But like, to me, it's they're another one of those bands that I have a hard time fully calling them new metal, especially because they didn't really come out until after like the main wave of these bands Mm -hmm. this era had already ended because like like babylon came out in like oh three oh four or or both because there was multiple versions of it it was just a fantastic album though and they're fantastic sound they're way more positive and less like angsty and depressing than many of these bands are Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but they definitely have like they definitely have that multi-genre and like hip-hop like influence that a lot of them do so to me if i'm talking about of the bands we've seen on this list and talked about we're talking about how much i personally enjoy them then then their goat if we're talking about purely bands that fall like 100 percent into that new metal qualifier i don't know where i'd put them because i don't know that they i don't know that they truly truly qualify but uh so that's kind of where i'm at i'm not sure but i but i love the band 
if we put Alien Ant Farm as, as new metal, then fucking Skindra is new metal. All right, get over it. <laughs> all right, yeah. all right. Then, then, then they're goats. <laughs> I mean, they, they. You said that album came out in 03, 04, 04, right? 04. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. It was three year issue. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of after the new metal boom, per se. I mean, there's still stuff coming out from those bands then, but we're not getting. It almost makes me feel like the, they're a little more. Let's change up what new metal sounds like. You get a little more positive. Yeah. Yeah. You get a yeah. little bit different kind of vibe from them, but they they have that they have that foot in that world still too, just because there's some, you know, similarities in the the melding of genres per se. Kind of like Three Eleven, right? I mean, we've we've talked about them in the past too, not necessarily with new metal in respect to new metal, but they they have their feet in a bunch of different genres too. So. Yeah, and they're yeah. positive, right? That's that's the positive factor. So yeah, that's they probably don't really fit new metal, I guess per se. But just listening to you guys talk about them, and and your you know the three of you having them as a band that you can kind of point to for the three of you, that's makes me like excited about it. So uh, I think. Hey man, if you guys haven't listened to, I don't know if you've heard their latest album is twenty eighteen. They did big things. I think it's fun. Nice. It's it is. it's worthwhile it is. all the way through. I'll have to yeah. check that out. That's that sounds like something that I might be more into than I've maybe let on in the past. Yeah, just check it out and let us know what you think. Just a, just a little promotion of our band. <laughs> also, it has a giant cat with like sunglasses on it, and so that's yeah, cool. that looks like it looks like Benji. It's a cat that looks like Benji. It's a, it's a cat. It's like cat. It's yeah. Colin the cat, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And I know this because I have Benji's children's book, and it's Colin <laughs> the cat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was just say it's the funniest thing. Like Benji, the lead singer of Skin Dread, wrote a children's book that that is about that cat, uh, and it features the cat called Cow and the Cat and Barco the Dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty nice. awesome. Nice. <laughs> so this band, I think, me personally, I had moved on from new metal in the moment when these guys dropped. So I completely missed this era of this band. They did very well, I know, in college radio. I remember getting their stuff but it really missed me and it's not a positive or negative. It's just, I, it didn't, I didn't even check it out. So I'm going to defer to you guys. If you guys know them, I trust you guys trust in itch. We trust. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of similar. I did see them live once and I thought it was a good show, but I had just seen um, a double bill the night before it was Elton John and Billy Joel. Oh, so wow. it was like this like insanely good show. And then like Skindred, obviously a completely different style and yeah. obviously a way smaller venue, everything. So it was almost like I was, it, I had a buddy in town. So we were just like trying to see as many shows as possible. And that was like the next day. So we went, but we were just drinking. We weren't really paying attention. We were just kind of, oh, we're at a show. Sweet. In fact, we snuck beers in and everything. <laughs> I think we, <laughs> I, or I almost got kicked out for doing that. But uh, yeah, I mean, the music's great. The show was really good, but it, similar to what Tuan said, like I wasn't paying attention when it came out and in the show, I wasn't really paying attention. So it's really my fault that I just haven't given, given them the time of day, but to hear you guys speak highly of them just, you know, validates the fact that I need to, you know, check this, check this band out and not have it, you know, fly by me, especially if they continue to tour. Um, I, mean, I like the reggae, yeah. I like the reggae aspect that you kind of mixes in with it. Yeah. You think that was the first single, right? Uh, one of those first singles. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody I, was the big single. The yeah. big single. Okay. Yeah. We got that here. That that so I played that Nate in our yeah. our hometown. We've established that you guys like us are also big three eleven fans. And oh, yeah. so there I find very little reason that one would like one of those bands and not like the other. That's fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Uh well I mean you just gave us some homework too. And and don't they do your theme song? <laughs> They, they do. do. Yeah. Yeah. They blessed us. They nice. privileged us to use their theme, their music for a theme song, and we're super happy about that. It's awesome, awesome when yeah. you find, yeah, you find your theme song, and you're like, man, this this fits us. This is great. And then it's yeah. it's a band you all love. Like, hell yeah, man. That's it. We ready for another one? Yep. Yes. Although I don't know if you can top that one. <laughs> yeah, for you guys, we may not be able to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Maybe we should have ended right there. <laughs> there's still a, there's still a shark lurking in here. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, oh. 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 Uh, 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 oh. We got to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. All right. Tuan says we've got to do it. It's Coal Chamber. So I'll start us off. I want to let him start off. Yeah. Go ahead. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. So Coal Chamber for me, easily Hall of Famers. They're not goat status. They're way above All Stars. They're certainly not six six man. I still listen to them to this day. I'll put on self-titled. I'll put on chamber music. 
I'm trying to think of the album after that was Dark Days. I think it was Dark Days. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So and that yeah. made a splash at college radio. But the first two in the moment were bangers. And then what, twenty two years later, self titled with Big Truck and what else is on that first? Loco is the big one. Uh, Loco. Oh, that's right. Sway. Loco. Yep. Sway. Yep. Yeah. And then you, you throw in the imagery of the band, which was like super fresh at the time. And then the imagery of the ice cream truck, like it was just, yeah, <laughs> yeah it was just, I think it was fresh at the time. And Des is a great front man. Obviously he did a uh, double driver, which is still, they're still kicking around for me, hall of famers. And I'm probably the, it sounds like I'm going to be the highest on these guys. I saw them back in the day several times and, I don't know. When I think new metal, they're one of the first bands that come to mind. Like the epitome of new metal in terms of mm. how they dress, how they acted, the sound. I mean, go listen to the intro of Big Truck. Like, come on. <laughs> That's the poster boy of new metal intros. I was going to say, for me, they get at least all star status just for Loco alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is that it? Is that all you got? Oh, okay. that's, that's pretty much <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, I, I accept it, but you got to prove it to these guys. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta. I, I will give you guys what you're saying. I think that Twan is spot on with Call Chamber being one of the poster children for the sound and look of this era. We talked about how Skin Dread was like really fringy. Call Chamber is right in the dead center of of what this stuff is. And I will give it to what KC said. Whenever I get the urge to listen to the style of music from this era, Loco is definitely one of the first tracks that comes to mind that I go to. I'm not gonna lie, I don't go too much farther into <laughs> Cold Chamber from there, but that song will always have a place. And so I, I can't go higher as high as you guys did. I would probably give them six men, maybe all stars, maybe, oh, probably man, not. That one hurts. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go six man. <laughs> You're gonna hate my turn. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry, not to break your heart, right. but. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree with Aaron on this one. Like, I, I would go with Six Man as well. Like, I was a fan of them early on. Like, you know, like Casey said, Loco. I, 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 I fucking love the cover that they did, the Peter Gabriel cover that they did with Ozzy Osbourne called Shock the Monkey. So good. It, so good. Yeah. Well, yep. Great song. But, but yeah, and I even saw them live. They were, you know, they were really good. And I'd consider that, and I know this is probably going to be really crazy to say, but I consider Morgan and Raina probably like the Beyonce Jay Z of metal, if you think about it. <laughs> uh, Morgan, the drummer from Seven Dust and, and the bassist from uh, Full Chamber, Raina, are actually married and they've been married for years. Uh, I, but I always, I've always considered them like the, you know, the that power couple in all of metal. Like I don't know, that's actually what I know them more for than their music. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that until right now. So <laughs> yeah, huh. cool. They've been married for years. Yeah, a little tidbit. Uh, is that, isn't that Enemy by Seven Dust about Dez? Isn't there some beef between Ooh. Oh, I think Dez you're right. And... I think I knew that. I think so. I remember hearing about, or reading about that, geeking out back in the day. Yep. But um, <laughs> nonetheless, I'm going to go six man on this. Sorry, guys. Or, sorry, Tuan. <laughs> um, <laughs> interestingly enough, I was more of a, De a Devil Driver fan. So when this band broke up and Devil Driver came along, I was like, oh, actually, I like, I like that band. So interesting almost like a nirvana foo fighters type thing like i like the band after um but cold chamber i thought they were pretty decent but i never got like full on uh fan you know fanboy on them um i never saw them live gotta say that uh, i missed that tour in portland that you saw twan i think that was with drowning pool right yeah they well then they headlined too they they were on the jägermeister tour with tree and drowning pool and i can't remember the who el nino was, but el nino so <laughs> um, I know the tour. I just was. I don't know why I wasn't, wasn't there. But um, yeah. So I'm gonna go six man just based on the fact that like I know that they were important, but um, they kind of passed my radar. And the fact that I like his band after is kind of funny, you know. And I always thought his contribution on the Straight Up album for uh, Lynn Straight was really good. But everyone on mm. that album, every song on that album is tight. So. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna go six man. Unfortunately, maybe I need to dig a little deeper. Yeah. Listen more. I think I'm in the same boat. I need to dig a little deeper. Yeah. But for me, I, I was. Honestly, I was scared of Cold Chamber, so the, the aesthetic didn't hit yep. me correctly, and I was like, nah, I'm out, and that made them, for me, still a bench warmer at this point, because it was just a band I never, could never get into, and it was the, the aesthetic. Today, Tony today would not do that, but Tony, when he was, you know, 15, was like, nah, no, <laughs> get away from me, I want something else. I could, I could see that, because like, 
Well, and you knew me then, too. In 98, <laughs> they were around for the first, maybe the first, like, wave, first 1.5 wave of new metal. Like, this was before a lot of the bands on this list, bef- like, they were caricatures of Coal Chamber. And I think if you got into them, as Nate says, in real time, which I remember, you know, eighth grade, ninth grade, being into them, and maybe that's part of it, too, you know? Uh, if you came in late... Or maybe you just don't like them. Maybe that's what you guys just don't yeah. like them. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Jeez, I mean, they're fringe goat. I got to be honest with you for me. I did find oh, out that apparently Reyna and Morgan are more like the Kanye Kim because they have no. since divorced. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. they have since yeah. divorced. Okay. Oh. Yes. We're, I mean, they've been together for years. So I don't know exactly when they got divorced. But yeah, they, they, had, they had a daughter together and everything. And I want to follow that up. We don't need to go into it in detail here, but I recommend that listeners uh, go to Wikipedia and look up Seven Dust Song Enemy, and you will find out exactly what it's about. And it's angry. (laughs) (laughs) Morgan was pulling no punches. (laughs) So So pause right now and go look look that up, and then come back because we've got another one. We're going to spin the wheel again right now. (laughs) You're a banger. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There it is. Yes, the banger we've been looking for. <laughs> Head to planet Earth. <laughs> Who's leading off? Dan? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it's it's funny because I, I absolutely love this band. This is one of my favorite bands of all time. We're talking about Head P.E. Um, we actually, you know, they keep putting out great music, too, even after 20 years of, of music. I would probably put them up there at Hall of Famer. I, I don't think that they're greatest of all time because there's still albums in there that I would choose to forget. Like the fucking one that came out in 2004 was just awful. But yeah, other than that, like I, I think that they're a damn good band and they've continued to put out great albums over the year. I think after like 10 albums, I think nine of them are really good. <laughs> was 04, is that only in America? Yeah. Yep, only, yeah, in America. only in America. That's the one. It was his solo rap project that he stuck a head PE label on. Yeah. There we saw them live uh on that tour at a tiny little uh-huh. pool hall in Portland, Maine. And the show was great. I mean they played Serpent Boy, they played Waiting to Die, they played some other stuff, though it wasn't all that record. But I mean I wouldn't tell you to go back and listen to that record right now because it is a tough hang as far as yeah. lyrics go. And <laughs> it, it is very cancelable in in twenty twenty one. Yeah, it, yes. it's garbage yes. album. It's garbage. Like it, the whole entire thing is just, there's not good music. There's no solos. Like his raps are are repetitive, and it's just a bunch of curse words being repeated. You know, it's just not. It's not very good at all. Other than that, like <laughs> all their other albums, and since then, like because I think they, you know, right after that they came out with some fantastic albums. They kind of righted the ship. Mm-hmm. I uh, I like the one after that. I'm drawing a blank on the name of it. Yeah, yeah. I actually like that one a lot more than most people do that will be uh, on this podcast, but will remain nameless. You know, it's funny. As I agree with that, like Back to Basics, like the three albums after that were fantastic. Back to to Basics, uh, Church of Realities, and New World Orphans, I think. Or no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, New World Orphans. It was Truth Rising. Oh, yeah. Yeah, It was uh, Back to Basics, Truth Rising, and then New World Orphans, which I, I loved all those albums. I think that they redeem themselves you know it took a while obviously but yeah i would say that they're hall of famers in my in my mind i mean they've been around for 20 years they're not quite the greatest of all time because they've had their follies but i do think that they're hall of famers yeah i would i would agree with hall of fame status because you know they had some of the early albums were fantastic and then actually a lot of their newer their newer albums stampede and uh class of 2020 i really enjoyed those albums so they're hall of famers for me and forever forever was great album too they're they're a hall of famer for me and they're they push up on goat status but you're right there's enough stuff in the catalog that kind of just just keeps them out of that mount rushmore but i mean self-titled uh broke and I, I even like Blackout. I know Blackout was more, uh, you know, label pressure to be a little bit more radio friendly. But there's some good, there's some good songs on that record. We've talked about it before. Oh, yeah. uh, there's some really good songs on that record. And I like Back to Base X. And in the moment, I liked Only in America because we were 20 and stupid. And looking back <laughs> on it now, I'm like, nah, this is terrible. And I know it's terrible. But I get to see them live on that tour. 
It was the second time we saw him, and uh, it was, I mean, I, I got a black eye at that show because I pushed somebody down as, about as hard as I ever had in a pit, and he punched me <laughs> trying to grab my shirt on his way back up. So oh, just, okay. just an awesome show. Like, it was just a, That's a like, tiny little room, and we just killed each other. It was great. So, yeah, I, they're, they're Hall of Famers for me, for sure. You and I definitely have different memories of that tour because I saw them on that tour, and they didn't play anything else besides everything that they played on, at least in my set list that I got to see was from Only in America, and I was so uh, fucking mad at the yeah, end of that show. Yeah, that sucks, man. <laughs> I, actually, if, if you listen to one of our episodes, when I, I, I think it was the episode where we talked about uh, uh, Class of 2020, I hated this band for years because of that show. <laughs> I literally did not like them and didn't, didn't play them on our show. I didn't even want to listen to their music. Until about, I think it was like 2012 or 13. Like, it took me a yeah. long time to go over that. Yeah. Yeah, they, I'll give them credit as being one of the bands that still, you know, exists and does stuff. And granted, it's mostly a Jared project at this point. Yeah, like, for sure. You know, and whoever he can get to support him. But, you know, last year, like you mentioned, we did an episode on their album that they came out with about a year ago. And it was a solid album. They've got an EP coming out this year. Like, they're still very, very active. And so I think there's something to be said for that. Uh, to I'm probably the dissenter amongst all of us. I got to give them all stars at best because I I've never loved them that much and a lot. Especially the early albums are the ones that they like became most known for, but they're also like so terribly offensive so much of the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I just don't enjoy listening to like that kind of stuff. I'm glad that Jared seems to have matured as he's grown up, as we'd hope that all people would. Uh, but still, it doesn't make it that much easier. I will say that Anthony mentioned Blackout. And I actually would have been interested to see where they went if they had followed a little more of that, like label pressure, uh, be, a, be a little bit more cleaned up. Cause I thought that was a pretty cool album. And I thought that there was something there that they might've been able to tap into, but he's, you know, he, Jared's a very DIY kind of dude. He doesn't really want mm -hmm. oversight. And so he chose his own path to stay more, much more independent, which is fine. But I was always curious about what would have happened if they'd have kept going down the blackout route. I can tell you, Aaron, it would have been The Clue. Oh. <laughs> All right, okay. All right. The Clue? You guys know The Clue? No. Clue was the band before Head P.E., like an 80s crazy, look it up on YouTube. Pretty funny. <laughs> no, but now I'm excited to find out. Ooh, your mind's going to be blown. It's got Jared, Jared circa 1987 or whatever. Like, Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Spandex suit. I'm going to say no more. Oh, wow. <laughs> Spandex suit. Well, but, now I'm um, going to have to tweet them clamoring for, for a return of that. I need to yeah. spend that suit. <laughs> I'm going to go Hall of Fame on uh, Head P.E. I'm a huge fan of the first three, uh, especially the first the first album. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. I love that freaking album. It defines that scene so well. So like Roots, like SoCal, 1997, just like solid. Every song on that album is just so freaking good. And even the Church of uh, Realities, or is it Church of Realities? Realities. Right. Of realities. Yeah. realities yeah like they're independent release there's some great songs on there too and just an original sound i i mix these facts up a few times I, I can't remember if it's fred durst getting influence from head pe or the other way around but they were definitely coming up at the same time in like 96 97 so when you when you say your their first album are you referring to the self-titled album or broke uh the self-titled okay yep but Broke's great too. And I, like you were saying with like the offensive stuff earlier, uh, Aaron, it is it is over the top, but it's like Broke, similar to Only America, came out in 2000. I was like 16, like such a young buck that I was like, this is insane. But <laughs> right, I almost felt yeah. like I was like living in my era of like what Motley Crue was previous. You know what I mean? This yep. is over the top. This is just insane. I can't believe this is even like allowed to be pressed on a CD. But the rhythm it's section it. and the flow of those albums and on uh, broke especially is just so freaking good like that there's some solid musicianship on those records so uh i'm gonna go hall of famers just based on those really just those first two after i'm not gonna lie i kind of lost focus after only Ameri in america um their live show started to decline uh, at least what i thought uh, after that and they kind of went through a like a interesting phase with uh who was it the twisted guys and stuff like that icp kind of yeah, crowd they were on that record label weren't they ICP yeah, record label? Yeah, they were on their label. So I didn't check out any of that stuff. So I kind of got lost, you know. And when they come around, you know, I don't, I haven't gone in a while. Maybe I'll check it out, but it's been a long time. But I was like a huge collector, like tried to grab all their stuff and just a ginormous fan. So I'm going to go Hall of Famers basically based on the early stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go 
I think for me, uh, drink if you have uh, me saying for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but for me, for me, for me, uh, chug your beer. They're all stars, and it's it's guided by the early catalog. I think self-titled is great. I think broke is great. I think blackout has its moments, and after that, I didn't really didn't really check them out. I did check out some. St- actually, I think when we we had an episode where we talked about three album run of them, and I revisited it. And man, I I'm gonna stick to those first couple records. So for me, they're uh, there. You go again, all stars. So consensus there is what Hall of Fame All Star Fringe. Yeah, right yes. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yep. That for the self titled record is so fucking good. I'm sorry. I, I and oh, honestly, man. it's not it's not as vulgar as what you get with Only in America or even no. some of nope. Broke. I think yeah. that is more just like punk mixed with uh, you know the the frenetic energy of of Jared. That uh, it's it's perfect. And they if they had stayed that band forever, fuck man, we'd be we'd be all oh, talking God. about something different. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They go somewhere and, completely different. Just yeah. And you got to give him a little credit with uh, Stampede in 2019, just kind of reinventing himself because he destroyed his voice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Years. I mean, how old is he? 55. Drugs. And stuff. I think he's 50. Yeah, he's got to be in his 50s, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, especially knowing that he's been around since the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> he is 57. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I oh, knew he was older. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Jerry I was doing that. this for a minute. Yeah. Good old MC underdog. He was pretty much 37 when he, you know, hit it big. Yeah, close to it. Which is pretty old when you think about it. Yeah. (laughs) For that genre. Yeah. 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 All right, so what do we got? Did everyone go that round? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. All right, you want to do one more? One more, and then um, we want to get the itches rushed more for each of you guys after this. Okay. This one can't suck either. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh boy! All right, okay. Doesn't Didn't suck. you do this one nope. last time? Uh, we did. We, we do this one last no, time. No, no. Nope. Uh, you you gave your your personal Mount Rushmore's and two right. of you. I th- or, yeah. Oh, I think okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the band is Slipknot. I'll I'll start. I mean, it the the, the their goat. I mean, uh, it, out of any band on this on this list, they're the band. I'm, I mean, outside of Deftones, they're the band I'm gonna want to see the most in in real time. Drink. <laughs> it, it, it's funny like corn is touring this year and i think with stained who was on the list so i'm glad they didn't come up but i think i would probably a lot of people would have corn up there too i would prefer to see slipknot i remember just coming up with them they were so energetic and they have you guys seen the welcome to the neighborhood vhs no no it was like it was what it was like a promo item that Roadrunner put out to promote these nine nutty crazy dudes from Iowa, and it's just that it's just like this is a movie. You you watched it and you were like, this is a movement. It's unlike anything I've ever seen, and I think I got hooked back in '99, and nothing's changed. I remember downloading a Napster, and I'm still here for it. I saw them in 2019. There's very very few bands from this genre and from their ilk that I could say that in there, they could be one on the go list. Mic drop. <laughs> I don't know. I, I definitely think that they're hall of famers. Like Slipknot is a band that have always made an effort to go out and see live. There's times where I actually love their live show. And there's times that I, I wish I would have left halfway through the fucking set. Like, I don't, I, I don't know. It's like, it's just a, I have a really kind of love hate relationship with this band. Like I, I love a lot of their stuff, but then like the, I'm not a huge fan when he just like sits there and screams and screams like all the time. Like I I like his melodic singing. He's got an amazing voice to do a lot of stuff with it. And I I tend to like those types of songs better. And like the last time we saw them live, it was just like, they were ready to play a metal show. And I was not ready to watch a metal show. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So that's, yeah, that's kind of, I, I do think that they're they're Hall of Famers. I, don't, I wouldn't call them greatest of all time because there's still albums and songs and stuff that I, I could do without from them. Yeah, they're they're. I could see how someone a lot of a lot of people would put them on goat status, but for me, they're they're more Hall of Famer than than goat. It's mostly because <laughs> you know Corey Taylor just has such a wide variety of styles that he wants to portray and you didn't say his name right that's true 
Take, take two. Do that again. <laughs> okay, sorry. C- CMFT. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Co- Corey motherfucking Taylor. There you go. <laughs> but no, you're good. But I don't know. For me, Slipknot is just <laughs> kind of like what you were saying, Dan. Sometimes just the the constant screaming, I I tend to shut it off after a while. <laughs> There, this is a tough one for me, I, especially because I'm, I'm still I'm very torn between like my personal like opinions and how much I like a band and looking at them like historically and overall as part of this like genre and its influence. And so for the former, I've never been that huge of a Slipknot fan. I don't probably know more than an album's worth of their songs myself, but the fact of the matter is that they are one of the handful of bands on this entire list that people still make a big deal out of it when they make new music, like a really big deal. Yeah. And part of that is Corey and his diversity and yeah, it's Stone Sour. Now you got his solo stuff and all his guest appearances. He's just, a, and his, and his outside of music things, he's just a huge personality. So I think he's one of the biggest rock stars in this entire list. And for that reason, I would put them in, in goat if I'm just making like a, a uh subjective or like an objective like list for me personally they wouldn't they would be i'll still give them hall of fame but they wouldn't be goat one comment i think they could be the biggest they've ever been right now i would agree with that yeah right. i would agree with that which is and who else which can you cr- say that about yeah, yeah. And, and and i'm trying to like echo what you said say it objectively and i don't know if many of them can no yeah. I think they might be the only one, uh, like at, at least to the top of my head anyway. Well, and it's like you said, I think it all go back, goes back to Corey Taylor. I mean, he's made a name for himself. He's mm-hmm. gone out there now. He's doing a solo effort that are, has already, you know, it's got us talking about it, obviously. <laughs> but it's not just that. Like, he was also doing Stone Sour, and he's just made a name for himself. Everybody knows who the hell he is, no matter what spectrum of rock you've been listening to. Mm-hmm. Totally. I'll go. They're, uh, they're GOAT for me. And... If you had asked me this question 10 years ago, I probably would have told you no. They're, they're like, I don't even know. They might have been sixth man. Just I would have been like nice because I knew that they meant a lot to a lot of people, but I was not into them. And then Nate talked me into going to see them. When did we see them, Nate? 2012, 2013? That summer? Before you left. I want to say it was like 09. Am I wrong? Well, maybe it was 09 or 10. So we yeah. saw them down at uh, Tweeter Center, which I don't know what it's called now. Uh, it's a massive outdoor, twenty thousand venue, and Great uh, Woods for the OG fans. Yeah, right. Great Woods. <laughs> uh, who knows what it is now? It's in Norwood, Mass. Xfinity. Xfinity Center. Yeah, yeah. It was a Tweeter Center, but whatever. Yeah. I don't even know. It's been Tom all Cass, kinds of different yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Nate had a ticket. Our, our friend Rob, who was on back on episode seventeen, go check it out. Uh, he he had gave us tickets to see them, and Nate was like, didn't have anybody to go with, and I was like, all right, I'll go with you. Like, I love music. I I'll find a way to like this. I, I was skeptical. I was like, I don't like Slipknot. This isn't my thing. And at w- w- the ride home, I was like, bro, you, you converted me. <laughs> like, I'm all in. <laughs> and I've been all in since. And I like, I really love the album that came out two years ago, We Are Not Your Kind. I think I, I, if Corey's doing something, I'm going to pay attention. I don't always love what he's doing, uh, but I, I'm usually going to find something about it that I like and uh, occasionally really, really, really like or love. So uh, I'm down for, for Slipknot, and they're definitely, the, I think, in this from this genre, uh, goat status for me, for sure. And I played a really good trick on Nate that, that summer. I, <laughs> I had washed the ticket by accident. I had gone over to, to Rob's. He'd give me the ticket. I washed my clothes pull it out i'm like oh no the ticket is destroyed i took a picture of his hands tonight i'm like sorry bro i can't go with you like you gotta go you're gonna have to go on your own it's like a three-hour drive from here but rob was like bro i got like 10 of these i'll just give you another one <laughs> so i knew the whole time i had another ticket but yeah and then i had to be like now nah, we're good dude i'll, I'll go i'll drive oh, let's man. get down there and we brought your boy tom and it was a blast so uh, and since then yeah. i've been a slipknot fan <laughs> A lot of personal connection with this band. Uh, I'm going to go Goat as well. Uh, kind of agree with everything you're saying there. In terms of Slipknot, they came out at, at a time that I liked heavy music, but I didn't know how much appreciation I had for really heavy music and especially the kind of diverse talent that is in that band, especially at the beginning. I mean, Joey Jordison was one of, my, one of my favorite drummers of all time, and the fact that he left or got kicked out or whatever happened sucks because I still you know, have high regard for him. 
but Slipknot had me cross over into a heavier scene that I wasn't fully aware of beforehand. So it was almost like this perfect, perfect bridge. And uh, Maine's got a pretty strong, heavy metal scene. So I was working on like the, you know, fishing docks in Maine. It's very stereotypical, like, like you know, perfect storm type stuff. A bunch of grumpy old men playing metal, talking all sorts of nasty stories from prison and stuff like that. And it was like this perfect atmosphere for Slipknot, like especially the early stuff. So I'm like, I fucking love this man. It's painting the picture perfectly on this, you know, cold waterfront, you know, blue collar type situation. So I just felt I went in, you know, head first and just checked out all their stuff. And uh, like you said, Twan, I think I'm a bigger fan now than I was even then because they continue to progress. And uh, Corey's a great guy. I think that adds adds to it. He's a super nice person. We've met him a few times and um, made me more of a fan than I already was. Drink. And, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go goat on uh, on Slipknot and uh, we'll continue to see them play live and, and listen to their records. But uh, yeah, maybe it's just the fact that I, you know, dove so deep so early and kind of continue to just stay with them. But uh, goat, yeah. I do have a picture of us when we met Corey at that Slipknot, or that uh, Stone Sour show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. So it seems that Patio Slave has deemed Slipknot Goat, and the Itch has deemed him Hall of Famer. But I mean, <laughs> that makes sense, right on that cusp. That's I. I feel like that's agreeing. The, the six of us yeah. kind of being on the same page there. Yeah. No, I could. I could see where where people give them goat status, but for me, yeah, I have friends yeah. that I know would put them there. You know, there's no doubt. Yep. Which brings us to the question: We're done. We're done with the wheel for the evening. We want to know from from the Itch. From you guys' mouths, who are on your uh, Mount Rushmore, your Hall of, your your goat status on Mount Rushmore? Casey, set the tone. Set the tone, Casey. Come on. Set the tone. <laughs> set the tone. <laughs> All right. For me, you'd have to you'd have to put Lincoln Park on there. I would put System of, System of Down up there. We're gonna have the same list. Corn <laughs> <laughs> uh, would be number three. And let's see. Mentioned him earlier in the show. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Skin Dread? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. See, can you bring that list up by chance? Yeah. Oh, thank you. That was it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I knew it was something I was missing. I couldn't remember off the top of my head. Let me guess, Dan. Crazy Town. <laughs> yep, you bet. <laughs> that was man. I wanted it. Crazy Town to come up. I really wanted them to they come up the in this DFA episode. Band. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're put, well, no, you... they were not. <laughs> but they were borderline. <laughs> if you put Rage Against the Machine uh, as new metal, then they'd have to be up there for me. If you don't, then probably like a Seven Dust. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, huh. uh, yeah. Mine and Casey's are, are pretty much the same. My first and foremost love of all new metal, and the only thing like I associated new metal with, like for the first years that this term was thrown around, was System of a Down. That band got me into heavy music, and they're one of my favorite bands of all time. So they would definitely be like first band on Mount Rush. I'd say after that, it'd probably go Gradient's Machines right up there too. That's one band that like I almost feel like I. I like them more because I it's one of those things like I, I didn't get a chance to see them live. Some things happen. I didn't, get, I didn't get to go, but I feel like that's one reason why I, I, I don't know. I would have them in like such a higher regard because I never really got to see them live, but I, I fucking love everything that they've done. And I'd also have to throw, throw in Skin Dread and probably Deftones. Deftones just continue to make music 20 years later that I absolutely love. Drink. I, every single yeah, yeah. album that they put out, it just feels like better than the last album. Well, that's because anything's better than core, but uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, we, we, we can agree on that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the only I was just say the only band that I really wish that I had room for that I might have like tried to squeeze in there would be Papa Roach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but mm. I, I think of all the bands that I have, uh, I think that it just didn't fit or didn't, didn't quite make the list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, this is a this is a tough one. Like to me, I, I have two lists. I have my personal list, and then I have, like I said, my more objective one. Where like here's the bands that I think, the bands that I think that have like overall combination of massiveness in the moment and staying power and interest this many years later. Which I think that's where you're looking. And even then, it's hard for me to narrow down to four. I think that's where you're looking at Corn, 
and Lincoln Park, Slipknot. I might sneak Papa Roach in there. I might put Disturbed in there. They would be pretty. They would be fringe. Um, yeah. And then the one that I'm, I don't. I'm pretty sure they haven't come up yet in this episode. Some for some bizarre reason, being you know the true goat, Slim Biscuit. Um, <laughs> you did it. <laughs> you, you did. They came up in the last episode. That's why. Yeah. They did. they did. Well, and I put them back in there just in case because I know you guys you guys mentioned them <laughs> at least once an episode, I mean, so they're on the wheel. <laughs> the bands that really defined that genre and that people still talk about today and or are still making uh, notable music today, and I'm not going to put Biscuit in that category, but they were so big as Fred Durst and his red cap are the image of new metal, <laughs> and and so there's that. My personal list, I'm going to go with a lot of what Dan said actually. Uh, Deftones are in there because these are mostly bands that are fringier on the definition, depending on how loose you play. So Deftones are in there because, yeah, they might have started in, in that realm. Um, you know, the label might have made them do Back to School, which is a super new metal song, but that's not really how they're, I would define them overall. But they're fantastic, as we've all agreed on multiple times before. Uh, <laughs> Skin Dread, as well as we mentioned, um, I'd probably put System in there in terms of bands that I still get pleasure out of listening to today. And then my last one, I would throw Chevelle in there because I still love them. Almost every album they put out, it's remarkably consistent. They definitely have the drop D and the angst, although it's a little, little bit vaguer what they're railing against than what a lot of these other bands were <laughs> at that fair. time. Send and the pain so, below, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Another yeah, band right, that right. I would say is like right by our cost, it would, for all of us, I know, uh, would be Breaking Benjamin. We've all been huge fans of that. Like They're huge in St. Louis for because they just keep coming back to this, to this city and playing live. Like, they just know they're going to sell out, so they play here, like, every other year. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I absolutely love that band, even even now. I mean, like, they, you know, they've had some some ups and downs in their career, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're one of my favorites. But I just couldn't put them over the rest of the four bands that I mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have Good it. Good bands there. That's Oh, and we didn't even hit a bunch of great bands. I'm just looking at what we've got left on the wheel here. So th I'm sure there's a part yeah. three and a part four down the line. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. This is the segment that keeps on giving. Yes. The wheel of new metal returns again in 2022. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to disrespect the wheel and and give the uh, the uh, terrible band. But uh... <laughs> we'll save them for later. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that offline. Yeah, we'll talk about that offline. So where can they find you guys? Everywhere we are, we are Itch Rocks, I T C H R O C K S. There's a website, there's a Facebook, and a Twitter, and an Instagram. We prefer the Twitter. I, I hate Facebook and Instagram, I paid less attention to. But uh, on Twitter, that's where we're really at. And at Gmail. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we've got 60 episodes so far as of this recording, and some more to come. And uh, yeah, if you're a fan of Patio Slave, you'd probably be a fan of the Itch. It's that 311 skin dread thing. I agree. As you stated last time when they were on our show, we compliment each other very well. I was listening we to their show and they like to go into the news aspect of stuff. We kind of go over music album reviews and things like that. So yeah, I think our shows compliment each other very very nicely. Yeah. So listen to us and then listen to them. I mean, we do. <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah that's fair. You, <laughs> you, you get plenty of time in your, in your day. Yeah. 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 Our episodes you, might be shorter. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> if, if, we ha if Nate had his way, we'd go for three hours every night. So. Oh. <laughs> I want to go long form, long form, long form, big. When someone starts paying us to go long form, I'm down. You're going Broadway? <laughs> yeah. It's a marathon yeah. podcast episode. Music. Yeah. We're going to do the entirety of the new metal canon in one episode. Yeah. <laughs> 50, 60 bands we've got here. That would be difficult. <laughs> I, I as much as I like some of these bands, I don't want to torture myself that way. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be a lot of next DFA, next DFA, DFA next. everybody's DFA. <laughs> the roster's full, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, hit those guys up on uh, Twitter mainly, but you can check them out on all those other platforms as well. Download them, subscribe, rate them too. Do that for us as well. If you've uh, this is your first time listening to us, go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button. And yeah, I mean, we're excited to do this with you guys again, and uh, hopefully down the line, some someday we'll be able to do it in person. That'd be that'd be fucking awesome, right? Yeah, that'd be right. That would. Yeah. I've seen have... how beautiful Maine is. It's beautiful. <laughs> I do have a twist though. The next round will be the uh, top eight, channeling back to MySpace. Your top eight friends. We'll do the top <laughs> eight. Uh, my uh, MySpace band, the new metal bands. Ooh. Okay. There All you right. go. Okay. 
right. So Nate, you can squeeze in trapped. <laughs> oh, oh no. did drop it. There it is. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, that's probably a good place to stop here. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for thanks for coming on again, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Th- thank Very you. Sure. Thanks, guys. Cheers, guys. We uh we'll be back next week and we'll see you then. Bye guys. Thank you.